Hey, what is up everyone? So I told you guys I was gonna document my journey to earning the OSCP. You may have seen my video of a couple of days ago just sharing a little bit of my disappointment and my frustration with the price tag compared to the content, but I am still determined to go through with this. I am still determined to knock out the OSCP. I've already dropped the money on it, so I need to grind hard, I need to study, and I wanna pass it. And as I go through this journey, I wanna share with you guys just different milestones as I hit them. And one big milestone today, I am uh, maybe five days into the lab time, I've kind of made two decisions, I think two decisions. The first decision I made is I am not going to complete the Pen 200 course. Now, that's been updated. If you've taken the OSCP in the past, you had a PDF, you had to submit a lab uh, stuff, which also sounded like a headache. Now it's kind of like what I would call a subpar try hack me module, where you have different exercises you need to do. And if you do them right, at least according to offsec standards, you're able to submit a flag. Now, as I was going through this, I was getting frustrated because I would create like a Python script or a bash script that did what they were asking it to do. It did it both in my environment as well as on their network, but I didn't do it whatever proper they, way they wanted me to do it. So I wouldn't be able to unlock the flag. So I, I was just getting to the point of uh, beyond frustration, just just true anger. So I thought, you know what, man, this is a waste of my time. I am done with this course. I'm gonna go back to Hack the Box and Vuln Hub. But then my friend who recently passed the OSCP, which I think community is important, right? So if you're in this, have someone you can talk to, maybe someone who's passed it or attempted to pass it who can offer you advice. But my friend said, hey, the thing I regret doing is not doing more of the PWK network when I had lab time. And I was like, man, I looked at the network, but it didn't make any sense to me. And he explained some things to me about the network that I found really helpful. And then I found some of the same information on the Offensive Security website. And I wanna share it with those of you who are starting the OSCP journey to hopefully help you understand the network. And uh, I was able to root my first machine on the network in about an hour. So let me just share this information with you. I'm gonna share my screen. All of this is public information. I'm gonna make myself a little bit smaller so you guys can see it. So I'm not violating any of their copyright policy because you can find this yourself by just Googling it. It is public on their website. You don't have to be logged in. But you have this Pen 200 Network Introduction Guide. And I'm just gonna read through this and hopefully it will make sense for you if you're just starting the OSCP. So you have this lab network. Now the way you navigate to it is when you click the Pen 200, you just click Labs and you have these different networks that you have access to. So the following graphic is a simplified diagram of the PWK labs. You will initially connect via VPN into the student network and hack your way into additional networks as the course progresses. Once you have completed the course videos, you will have, well, I didn't, I'm not doing the course videos, bro. <laughs> You will have the basic skills required to penetrate most of the vulnerable computers in our lab. Certain machines will require additional research and a great deal of determination in order to compromise them, right? So the, the, this is kind of cool. I, I'll give offsec props for this. The way this network is set up is really neat. The reason I was confused is the first thing you have access to is this first network, and it's just a list of IP addresses. And I thought, okay, shoot, do I have to find like a needle in a haystack out of all these different IPs? Do I need to find one or two that are vulnerable? Um, but my friend told me, no, like they're all vulnerable. And that's actually what they go on to say. Um, if I scroll down, they say all the machines in the lab range are vulnerable to some type of attack or exploit. Remember, there are several vulnerable machines within this range that act as routers and lead to additional vulnerable networks. Other departments have no restricted ranges for attacking and the whole 24 network is allowed to be targeted. So my friend told me, hey, just treat each IP like a hack the box machine, scan it and work on rooting it. And it's a good way to get your practice in in some of their environment that might be a little more realistic to the exam. So I took his advice and uh, I tackled my first machine. I just scanned, uh, I scanned like six different machines with Nmap, just did dash P dash and then dash capital A to throw all the enumeration scripts at it. It takes a while. So I did that, went and did something else, came back to my computer and at least a few of them were done. I tackled one of the ones that were done. There were quite a few rabbit holes built into it, but I was able to, hopefully do what I think is good enumeration. And in less than an hour, I went, I think in, in 30 minutes, I had my initial low level shell. And then in another 20 or 30 minutes, I was able to elevate my privileges to root and I fully compromised the machine. After I did that, I looked up the machine on the offensive security forums, which you only have access to as a student and on Discord, which you also only have access at least to the part I was looking at as a student and saw that it was actually a machine that a lot of people struggle with, a lot of people have issues with. So I felt pretty good that I was able to compromise that beast in about an hour. 
and I'm feeling a lot better than I was before. Now, the other thing I want to talk about is just frustration and a little bit of burnout. So I've been on this journey for quite a while. And as some of you know, I was streaming every single night. I mean, I was putting in anywhere from 10 to 20 hours of study and work outside of my day job that I work 40 hours a week and outside of having two young kids just learning and hacking and growing in my career. I'm going to drop this. I'll jump back to my screen. So it's not like I felt burnt out just from the OSCP stuff, but I've been doing this for a while. And then when I started the OSCP and their course in particular, I got to the point of just like, man, if there was a refund method, I would have asked for a refund and said, screw it. I'm not doing the OSCP. I am done. I'm throwing in the towel. But they don't give me that option. But I, I was extremely frustrated. And here's what I've learned, guys. Uh, when you're frustrated, you can't learn. So when you reach that point and you you know what that point is at, take some time away. So for me, I have spent uh, some time outside with my kids. I was playing tag with my son and daughter. I have a five-year-old daughter, now a three-year-old son, and we were playing at a playground, playing tag, just getting outside, and then came back home, uh, did some meditation time, and just felt much better, felt much more refreshed, and dived into that machine that I rooted with a fresh mind and was able to knock it out pretty quickly. So if you are at a spot where when something doesn't work, you get like like unnaturally frustrated, I think that's a sign that's a symptom of that you're on the verge of uh, just a little bit of burnout and don't keep pushing through it. In that aspect, do not follow Offsex model to try harder. Step away. The way I'm going to try to implement that, I know for the exam, I'm going to get frustrated. And so I'm going to try to remind myself to build in intentional breaks, even if it's 30 minutes, 40 minutes to go outside, uh, just to hang out with my kids, to get away from my computer, to get my mind off things. Even with the rush of the time of the 24 hours, you are much more effective when you are not frustrated every couple of minutes. So as you are going through this journey, just know that I think it's okay to be frustrated. At least I've been really frustrated going through their course. It's okay. Take time away. Take a break and come back into it with a fresh mind. You cannot learn very well when you are frustrated. So milestone for me, rooted the first machine in about an hour on the network. So it was a little more difficult machine, so I'm happy about that. And the other milestone is I finally understand what the heck the PWK lab is for and how it can be used. Now, I'm sure if you do the actual course, which I didn't, they maybe explain that to you. But like I said, I skipped the course uh, out of frustration. So if you're me and you stumbled across this video, hopefully you found this video helpful. And we will continue this journey together. I'm about three months away from taking my first attempt at the OSCP and I will keep grinding it out but I will catch you guys in the next video